Suppose you're scrolling at Instagram like every other day and a very informational post comes up your feed. It could be anything about a tip related to finance or business or probably a photography hack or something. So you want to remember it so that you can apply it later on, you know, craft of life. So you invest your time, you read it, you watch it completely and you think that you'll remember it. But at the end of the day, when the time comes to actually apply that thing, you don't remember anything. The information is just gone and you don't know what to do. So something similar happened with me also last week and it was not just the first time but this time I gave a conscious thought to it. How do I remember the most of the information that I'm reading? So I did not have an answer so I googled it up and I searched for this query and Google bombarded me with another 53 billion pages of information. So I was like that's great. But the most common technique that was mentioned in the top links of the first page were this technique called Feynman technique and it was something like Whenever you read a concept, try explaining that concept to someone else. And while explaining, you'll see the flaws and gaps in your explanation. Then go back and read the concept again, and then fill in those gaps and then teach it again. And that way you'll remember it for the most part of your life. So I thought of using the same technique in my photography and films also because I've been learning a lot about photography and films and a lot of techniques about other things. So I thought of you know making these tutorials in which I'll be explaining things and concepts to you guys and it will help me understand the concept better and at the same time it will benefit you guys also. So this way we can probably learn together and we can go hands in hands a long way. So that's why I'm starting this little series of tutorials where I'll be sharing my experiences and learnings that I've learned all throughout this five to six years of my photography journey. And we'll be sharing with you guys in the form of short tutorials that will be different from my vlogs. And hopefully we all can get benefit of it. And in no way I'm saying that I'm expert at it. It's just I'm learning new things and I'm sharing with you guys. So you can take it that way. So without wasting any more time, let's just get started. Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. My name is Ishan and you're watching Taka Taka. And in this very first tutorial, we'll be learning how to create an Instagram filter through your own presets. And if you don't know how to create a preset, then pause this video and check out the link above in the card and then follow along with me. So first of all, you have to download and install this software called Spark AR, where we'll be doing the real stuff and you don't have to go anywhere. The link has been given in the description below. You can download it from there. You're welcome. Also, there is another link given in the description from where you can download the necessary files which will be required to create this filter. Just let me know when you're done. I'm waiting. So by now I'm expecting that you've already installed the application and you are ready to launch it. So, so this is the screen that appears when you launch the application. And don't be petrified of all the things that you see. These are called templates and these help you to create different kind of objects and filters in Spark AI Studio itself. But for now, we'll just click on new project and blank project and this window will appear where you can see this man making different faces. Don't worry, he's just here to help you guys. He'll actually show you how your filter is going to look in actual when somebody is going to use your filter on Instagram app, right? So this is called a simulation window. This right at the center is the viewport and all the icons that you see on the above are called manipulators. These are used to move and drag different elements or rotate them. And this on the left is the scene panel alongside the layers panel, which is hidden over here. And this on the bottom is the assets panel. And this is where you'll be importing all the files that I've provided you in the description. So before importing, let's launch Photoshop. So now you have to import the base set image that I've provided you in the description. And on this particular image, you have to apply your preset and then it will carry the information from your preset to the AR Studio, right? So now simply you have to go to the color lookup and then load 3D LUT and this is my preset and you have to put your preset on this. It would be look something like this. And so the preset has been applied and now I'll press Ctrl Shift E to merge all the layers and Alt F8 to save it. Since I already have saved the Modi tones by the name of Modi tones, so I don't have to, but you can save it by your name and put it in the same folder, right? So now you can see so now you can see these all files in the folder that I've given you. So now you have to import both these files in the AR Studio. You can simply select them and drag and drop them in the assets panel, right? So you can see they have already imported now. So now the first thing that you have to do is you have to create a canvas. Canvas is something where we'll be doing the actual work. Everything that you will do will be on the canvas itself, right? So to add a canvas, you have to click on add object, scroll down, and you can see a canvas there. 
so insert it now the canvas is ready now you have to add a rectangle that matches the size of the screen right so you have to right click on the canvas because you have to create a sub layer of it you can add and then rectangle so you can see a little square appear upon the viewport also and as well as on the simulation panel also so now you have to match it to a screen size so what you got to do is you have to click on this fill width and you can see it has already filled the width of the screen and now same with the height there you go now you have to pin it to the so now you have to pin it to the sides of the screen because different screens will have different sizes so now you have to pin it to the all four sides so you will be pinning it up right so now we are almost ready half of the work is already done actually now imagine this is the plane this is the rectangle that we have created and now you have to put a paint on it that is your preset right so for that it has to have a material that will be there so now we'll be putting a layer of material on it and that material will carry a preset got it so for that we'll, what we'll do is simply click on material and you can see in the asset panel a material zero has been created we can name it LUT there you go and now all you got to do is you have to click on the view menu and click on show hide patch editor as you click it a new window by the name of patch editor will open up in the bottom and now what you got to do is you have to import this fast color alert on the patch editor and there you see so you can see that it takes two input texture and LUT and gets out one output that is the color that is the filter actually so for the filter thing as I said that this is the plane, this is the material and the filter will be applied on here. So first of all, that material will be the output one, right? Where the filter will be applied. So you have to go to the materials, click on LUT that we have made just now. And you can see here texture, right? So now you have to click on this little right sided arrow. And as you see, you can see a LUT diffuse texture being created in the patch editor. So now you need two inputs. First one is texture and the other one is LUT. So we already have a LUT prepared so we can just drag and drop over here. And now for the texture you have to go to the camera and as you click on the camera you can see this little thing open up and you can click on texture extraction and as you click you can see another texture open up here. Now you just have to drag and drop it over in the and now is the time for the fun part all you got to do is you have to connect the links to all these four items in the patch editor and how you do that simply click on this arrow and just drag and drop here same for the preset there you go and same for the output thing you connect it to the material layer there you go so my preset has already been applied on this particular guy and he's showing you how my filter is going to look when somebody is going to be using that filter in the instagram application right so that was it for guys and if you want to include another layer of probably dust and scratches that i provided you guys so what you can do is so you now you have to add another canvas that will carry that particular layer so click on canvas you can see another canvas loaded up now click to add a rectangle that will cover up the whole screen so again the same procedure there you go pin it to the sides of the screen again a plane is created it has to carry a material right so we have to add a material this time you can create a new material and you will name it uh, dust probably there you go now i have sent you seven dust and scratches file so now this is the texture where all those seven scratches will be applied in particular animation so what you got to do is you have to click on this arrow and then new animation sequence and as you click on it this will appear up now you have to choose the files you click on it and just select all the eight files that i've sent you this is the file so now you can see it is moving really fast so the frames are actually moving very very fast that's because of this fps setting that is frames per second so actually it is going by the 25 frames per second so now i'll take it up to four frames per second and there you go it looks cool to me so now we have this dust material created up. Now what you got to do is you just have to change the blend mode from alpha to screen and probably a little less opacity and this will work. There you go. So we finally have the filter ready for export. For that you have to just go to this panel where you can see on the left there is export and upload, right? Just click on it and you can see it's already calculating the file size and everything. 
So before publishing, you know, friend, you just have to export the file, right? So don't click on upload. Just click on export file once it is ready. And uh, there you go, it's ready. So I've exported the file and in the same folder, I'll just put that file. Boom. There you go. So you can see it can, so you can see it has appeared up here. Now you have to upload this file to the Facebook server. From there, it will be reviewed. And if everything goes well, your filter will be published. So I already have a couple of filters uploaded right now. So what you got to do is you just have to go over here, publish an effect and then which platform you are publishing it for since we are doing it for instagram so you'll choose instagram and then you have to upload that effect file that we have created which is present over here once you have filled up all these little things this is the main part actually where most of the people actually face some problem so now what you got to do is you have to save it and once you save it this test on device link will be activated so now you just have to click on send or you can directly share this Instagram link to your chat profile and from there you can click on it. I would prefer send button because it directly sends the notifications. So I'll press send and notification will appear. Try vintage moody tones by Takata Car. So now I'll press on this icon and you can see it will tell you that you can have to test this effect. So I'll press continue and you can already see that it's working. Now what you have to do is you have to record the video by pressing the button in the center record button and as you do you have to create a two to three second video you can actually turn off the sound and download the video it will process and save will be saved in your gallery now this video that you have saved you have to upload it over here in the demo video itself so you have to upload video select that particular file upload and submit it if everything goes well which probably will your effect will be published within three to four hours so that is it for today guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did please like the video and do subscribe to my channel so that i can keep coming with such stuff more often and also if you face any difficulties during the course of this tutorial please let me know in the comments below so that we can look for a solution together and that's it we'll see you in the next video